What's up guys, Steve there, one, two, and two, and it's how to beat a day. Ah oh, yes, how to beat a day, the day I teach you how to beat it. Um, phrasing? This is why I normally run this stuff by Ryan. How to Beat It is a series of videos based on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels, where I teach my scrub scribers how to beat those pesky meta decks. Because it's really hard to troll the meta if you don't know what the f*** it does. Something that, you know, me being out of touch of mainline Yu-Gi-Oh! for a little while uh, has been quite apparent. <laughs> what that do? I don't know. Has a lot of text? Better negate it. End of video. <laughs> and today we're going to be looking at the pesky meta deck, Kash Tira. First off, what's the deck's general goal? Well, Kash Tira is primarily a bunch of big bungus level 7 monsters who want to make rank 7 XE plays. But the devil's in the details. Unlike a lot of other meta decks who play a bunch of extra deck monsters to set up a board of negates, Kashtira would rather uh, put up a bunch of cards that prevent you from playing the game in the first place and also starving your deck of resources. Sounds like a fun time if they have it their way. Have it your way. Your entire deck would be banished face down and your main monster zones and main spell or trap zones <laughs> are all locked out and unusable a la Ojama. But like I said, they don't tend to play a lot of negates in their extra deck, and that is where we'll get them. That's what deck's trying to do. How do you stop it? Well, the best way to stop any deck is to hit them at their choke points. And Cash Tira actually has some pretty well-defined ones, so if we can take advantage of that, we might actually stand to be able to win a game here. First and foremost, don't let them get a second monster on board. That's, uh, that's probably true for a lot of decks, but okay, cool. Ogre, Unicorn, and Fenrir, are all level seven monsters that said, if you don't control a monster, you can special summon this monster from your hand. They also have the ability to search a Kashtira card from your deck to your hand, a uh, monster spell and trap, depending on which one you've summoned. Things like Permanence, Valor, and Ash are actually pretty effective here because if you negate the effect of the monster they've just played and did not allow them to get to the second card they need to continue the combo, they are now stuck with a monster on board, preventing them from summoning the other Kashtira cards. But let's say you don't got the Impermanence. What do you do? One of the cards they're going to be looking for when they search with their monster, specifically, oh, I don't remember. Which one's which? Unicorn. When they summon Unicorn, it gets them a Kashtira spell card. And the one of those two spell cards is going to be very important. That one is going to be Kashtira Thesis. What's Thesis though? Well, Thesis is a spell card that says uh, if, if they got a Kashtira on board, they can put another one from their deck to the field. It's their second monster. They're an Xeed deck. Don't let that resolve. Less than ideal, they could also go for Kashtira Birth. Kashtira Birth is a continuous spell card. Ooh. MST negates. That lets them normal summon one of their Cash Tira monsters without tributing. Uh, it's, I know, it's kind of like their Valhalla Hall, the Fallen, but it's a normal summon. It also acts as a monster reborn. This one has a little bit more utility in mid to late game than Thesis does, but this is another good option for them in order to get their second monster. If you couldn't stop the search, or if they already had these things in their hand, stop these. But okay. Let's just say you didn't have your effect negation in hand, but you do have Nibiru. After summoning a few from their hand and then a couple from the extra deck, Nibiru is going to be live pretty quick and because they don't put up a lot of monster negation waiting till the end of their main phase to you know activate the nibiru is probably a safe bet and gonna get you the uh the most advantage most bang for your buck okay now let's say you bricked you went second you didn't open any of your, your well it's not a side deck because it's master duels you, you opened up all that weird crap you have to main deck in order to play ladder you didn't see none of it so that your opponent was able to go off go ham sandwich and now you just gotta stare down their end board what is that gonna look like a typical cash tier of board will probably consist of a couple of cards it'll consist of their first xc monster oh boy uh cash tier of shangri-ra i think i'm pronouncing that properly cash tier arise heart and the ever so spicy number 89 diabolosis diabolosis the mind hacker more conservative board might look like uh, just an Arise Heart with some back row, which could be a uh, Kashira Big Bang Attack, Preparations, or more likely like the Solemn Baggager. Or if you're playing against an absolute dick, they're gonna try this Zone Lock combo nonsense which has two of the uh, Shangri-Ras on board. <laughs> I did it. You're staring down their wall of monsters. What do you run against it? Shangri-Ra actually has some inherent protection against battle or destruction by card effects, so that means things like Regeki aren't going to be particularly useful here. Book of Moon or Book of Eclipse are an interesting choice here. 
Since Shangra Ira can lock you out of using your spell traps or main monster zones, and Arise Heart is a walking macrocosmos, putting them face down is a good way to make your, uh, make Yu-Gi-Oh work for you again. Because they're face down, they no longer do anything to floodgate you from making any actions. And also turns off Big Bang Attack. Very cool. Triple Tactics Talents. Arise Heart has this fun once per chain ability that says if a card is banished, attach one banished card to this thing as material. That is not optional. And since the whole deck focuses on trying to banish your cards, this thing must activate and probably will activate. Meaning, Triple Tactic Talents is live. Woot! Stealing the Arise Heart is pretty nifty because it means you can go into battle and then have it like punch over Shangra Ira, which, you know, can't be killed by battle, but does allow you to successfully attack, therefore letting you go into Zeus during your main phase too. And because this thing steals stuff to stack a bunch of stuff under it, you'll probably have a live Zeus. Pretty nifty. I like that. That's that's a cheesy fucking way of outing their board, man. <laughs> Number 41, Baguska the Terribly Tired Tapir is always a viable option. All of their extra deck monsters really don't stop you from playing this guy, so if you can get him on board while you still have some monster zones to use, you can use his effect to put them all in defense mode and negate their effects. Now you can just play Yugi Mans. Very cool. Kashtira Unicorn have the ability to look at your extra deck and pick choice cards out of them. Not only does this make playing against the deck really obnoxious because they're robbing you of resources, it is giving the Cash Terra player knowledge of what the hell it is that you're doing. If they see a bunch of Marincess monsters in your extra deck, that probably tells them you're, you're playing Marincess. And knowing what your opponent's deck does or what they're trying to do is, a, is, a, is your step one to learning how to beat them. You know, like the point of this video. But you can play mind games. If your deck doesn't need an extra deck, fill it up with a choice extra deck who has a, a strategy that's counter to your own. If you fill your extra deck up with a bunch of wombo combo things like, I don't know, live twin, but you're actually playing like some sort of obnoxious burn stun, your opponent's gonna probably use the knowledge that, oh, he's a wombo combo deck, I'm gonna put up something that will stop his wombo combo. And then you proceed to not do that, huh? Don't just fill it with nonsense. Fill it with something to mislead your opponent. It's a best of one format. It'll work. Smoke screams work when there's no game two. Or if you do require an extra deck play, just extra copies. If you know that the Keshtura is running around in the meta and it's gonna be absolutely what you play against in ladder, uh, play a couple extra copies of cards that you absolutely need to be able to summon. I know it sucks because you'd rather use that spot for something that you actually need as like a toolbox or something, but nah, it'll probably serve you better in the long run if you just have extra copies of stuff you absolutely need. Obviously we touched on this before, but hand traps are pretty powerful against this deck, stopping the summon, stopping the summon's effect, or, uh, I don't know, tributing them all with uh, Nibiru is always a very good strategy because they don't put up the kind of negates that they need in order to stop this kind of nonsense. One spicy tech card you can run against this deck is called, uh, Curry Kara Divine... Div... Divine... Sometimes I think they're just screwing with me. Curry Kara Diva Carnate. Not Kara Curry, Curry Kara. Thanks. Basically what this thing does is it's like a little baby Nibiru that can be special summoned during your turn by tripping all face-up monsters that activated their effects this turn, i.e. Uh, their extra deck monsters. It gets a bunch of attack power, and then during the end phase, you can special summon one of the things you sacked. So that's pretty slick. That's a fun little uh, extra card you can run against the deck. And finally, you can always just kaiju stuff. It's ne never bad. I would probably maybe lava golem here because you can sack too, but kaijus are fine. That, that also helps. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Fun fact, this is the first one I've recorded since my hiatus, even though it's probably not the first one I, I made back. So if it seems a little clunky, I'm sorry. It's actually my like third time recording this because I'm so out of practice. Let me know what you guys think of this video as well as this series. And I think next up we're going to be talking about, oh, those little Eevee looking things. Per Pirelli? Per Gianelli sausage? Fuck, what is it? Per Pirelli? Anyway, that deck. So remember guys, if you don't troll the meadow who will, I'll see you guys next time. Okay. That sucked. <laughs>